Hey, uh, so today I'll tell you about Google Collab, like basics of Google Collab, and I'll show you one example with uh, doing image classification in PyTorch as well, and I'll cover the concepts which I feel are necessary. You should know about PyTorch, and I'm not sure that the courses I mentioned are covering those topics or not. Yeah. So first thing is how uh, the uh, main thing why people are using Google Collab is because first thing it provides very good internet connection so the download time of data set is very less over there and the main thing is it provides uh, GPU free GPU otherwise uh, services uh, cloud services like Google Collab and AWS ch charge hefty money for GPU but Google Collab provides uh, uh, free. The only demerit with Google Cloud is the runtime gets disconnected after every 8-9 hours. So you'll have to look into it. So basically first I'll tell you how to get data set on Google Collab and uh, uh, other some pre-processing things which are specific to Google Collab. So first thing is how to start the runtime uh, with GPU. So in runtime section you can see this change runtime type and change it to GPU. So the device will be gpu as i showed you earlier there was no cuda capable device but now when we uh, when we'll run this thing uh, it will show yeah like tesla p100 is available so basically google google collab provides a, i guess four or five gpus and it depends on what is like the how much number of users are at that time at that particular time connected to google collab uh, so like right now p100 is available and p100 is best gpu that google collab provides other gpus are k80 uh, which is old one and then t4 and p4 so i'm not sure if uh, it provides any other gpu or not yeah so <clears throat> uh, now i like this is where you can see every file details uh, whichever file are available on your current runtime, sort of like file explorer explorer in our system and one good thing about google collab is you can directly mount your google drive here by just clicking on drive and you can also mount any other drive which is not associated with this account but yeah the if you want it to be from this account only it will directly get mounted so yeah you can see this drive option here my drive and all the things which are in your google drive also uh, now i'll tell you how to download data sets and the how to download data set basically depends on what is the source of your data set in case your source is kaggle which is like one of the main source for open source data sets you uh, you can use uh, kaggle's built-in command line interface for that so i i wrote this code i don't know why this sort of i created sort of library and I'm not sure why this is not working. So I'll send you the, this piece of code if you want it in future. Uh, so this is, uh, you'll need to upload a kaggle.json file here. Uh, and you need to do to authenticate which user you are. Because you know, competitions are uh, not open to public. Uh, you should be like, you should register to them or... Uh, And now uh, I'll uh, show you in case my internet works. Yeah, like uh, Intel class. Yeah. And this is the data set I'll use. Uh, yeah, for every data set you can find this copy API command and you just copy it For uh, one thing for executing OS commands in Google Collab you will need to put a percent sign or exclamation sign So and then this command will get executed. The, basically this is command line interface Okay, uh, wait, I'll check uh, Why my API command is not working? Okay, I guess my API token got expired. So yeah, you basically see how to create go to my account section and then create new API token. Uh, 
this will download this kaggle.json file so now uh, i resetted my system uh, this google collab runtime and then execute this thing again <coughs> Basically, Kaggle.json file contains the your API token unique to your specific account, uh, and you'll uh, one demerit uh, I told you about that earlier as well. I guess uh, is the storage on Google Collab is not persistent, so it will get disconnected after uh, every like eight nine hours. So. You need to uh, uh, and you, because you can mount your Google Drive, you can save everything which you need uh, in future on Google Drive. Otherwise, after eight nine hours, that thing will get deleted, and you can't like there is no backup or something. So for backup, you'll have you'll have to write explicit code for yeah. So see you the dataset for download. You'll have to write explicit code to shift that thing from runtime Google collapse runtime to google drive so refresh and see here is the data set we downloaded and it is not in drive it is in google collapse internal storage so we'll unzip unzip the data set now you can copy the path from here and yeah see unzip is linux command and i put an exclamation mark before that so yeah Uh, I'll share you this link. Uh, if your dataset is not from Google, uh, from Kaggle, you can download it. If it is from Google Drive, there is one simple API command. You just write the file ID and it will get downloaded. The only demerit with this thing is the file should be public. So for sometimes there will be cases when you can't uh, put the file to public or it belongs to someone else and you can't make it public. Third thing is using CLI get. Uh, it is basically a, a, a Firefox extension. You just start downloading whichever data set you want. And th uh, uh, this extension you, uh, that will grab it and give you a curl link. So typically it looks like this and you just put an exclamation mark and that thing will start to download. Uh, I, uh, basically this is one of the most used thing to download data set because you know uh, either data set the kaggle data sets are not like uh, they are very basic i guess and the like these colleges and all don't put their data set on uh, on kaggle uh, they first uh, do something like form filling or something so that they can know you then they give you the data set access so for so most of the time you'll ha you'll have to do all the all the stuff and now uh, I unzip the data set. As you can see, there are three folders train, test, and uh, red uh, like validation set. You'll have to face such type of problems because your internet is not good. And this is basically some JavaScript thing pushing on your system. Sometimes it will get hanged or something. This is not my system which hanged. Uh, it is Google Collabs runtime. Yeah, so see, these images are downloaded now. I must have told you, some of you how to write PyTorch data loader and all. I'll tell you again with this as an example. So, <clears throat> see, a train will have like six folders, right? Six folders. So, uh, I'll, I'm also writing this code for the first thing. When basically the your data set is divided into folders, you won't need to write the data loader as I'm writing it now. Uh, you can directly do it like uh, I'll write the code. Yeah. See this part of code. Uh, but uh, most of the times you won't find data set like that. And uh, you'll, you'll either get a CSV file or JSON file or something from which you'll have to pick up the data set so yeah so 
uh, that's why I'm showing you how to make data loader. Otherwise, when the full uh, the data set is not divided into classes, uh, because you know when data sets are big, you can't explicitly move every file from your Google uh, from one folder to folder divided in classes. So that's why I'll show you it in this way. Just a second. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if the I have not studied from the courses I sent you, so that's why I'm not sure what content they are covering. That's why I'm writing content. Uh, I'm showing this as a content. You can skip this part if you are already aware. Yeah. So uh, just a second. Yeah, sorry, I was doing some stuff. Yeah, so basically, I'll tell you, explain you what this thing is. Uh, this will be the basic structure of your Google, uh, your data loaders code. This will load you one image, like for computer vision case, where, where it is one image or one video. It will load, give you one, it will return you one video. So as you must be knowing, we do pro uh, do coding and uh, training in batches. So uh, we'll also need to write data loader, which gives in batches. But PyTorch has implemented it internally, so you won't need to explicitly write logic for that. Just one, uh, just to load one batch. Yeah. So uh, this is init constructor uh, constructor function, and you just show whatever stuff you pass argument whichever things you want to execute once so for this thing uh, i guess this logic will work i hope you are aware about blog now This is not related to our code, some like uh, Google Collabs internal error, and we printed the length of all. And I'll show you one. Yeah, see, uh, sec train, sec train, and forest, and then image name. So what we can basically do is this file contains absolute this uh, list contains absolute path of every image and this uh, here it contains the label. So we'll make one label encoder because our model will take like uh, our model will take numbers as input and not forest directly. So we'll also make one encoder thing. This video is going to be long because like I'm writing all this code first hand so that's why uh, yeah and OS. i told you to read about os module as well so i hope you are aware of it so all the classes are os dos list dir and this folder so now this list will contain name of every classes so we'll make a dictionary out of it right 
yeah so now for uh, class then classes enumerate use better variables when you are like coding finally for like now uh, you know i don't i am not very good at coding so i like defining variable names and all but i spent time after writing the code to change the variable names so you can do that as well or if you directly get the idea yeah one encoder decoder yeah encoder is basically encoder of id cl idx and decoder of id x yeah uh i guess it will work I'll pause the video for a while just to check whether sound is coming or not. 